Hey, Vlad here from devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video in the Zio series. In the previous video, we have rewritten core and persistence, and today we're going to continue with the delivery and the dependency injection layer. Today is going to be the first time where we're actually gonna see it in action. Let's get right to it. All right, now this is exactly where we left off. Let me actually go over here and collapse all of these guys and we're gonna go straight to delivery over here. Now remember how I said that Zio is a batteries included library. Over here, we ended up implementing our own version of console and our, our own version of random. Now, Zio has all of these things, but again, since I want to keep this rewrite very, very mechanical, we're simply going to improve it and just move along as fast as we can. So let's go to random, let's do our own trick. Right, let me actually show this to you, right? It's a super, super tiny thing, but still, you know. Okay, so random alt, there we go. And let me actually save all of them. Let me actually wait a little bit. There we go, save all of them. There we go. And let me copy paste, F2, random like this. Let me close all the others, go over here, mark these guys, mark all of them. Actually, I should remove this one. Okay, mark all of them like this and just just delete them. Actually, mark this one as well and delete them. Okay, so this is going to be a random, random, random like this. And uh, same as before, we're simply gonna go over here. We're gonna replace it with Zio. We're gonna go over here. We're going to change this to R and E like this and this is going to be uh, Zio RE over here is going to be faster if I actually write the entire line myself right so it's going to be yo yo of random random okay it doesn't require anything and it's never going to fail with nothing so I'm gonna mark this guy I'm gonna go like this we're gonna go Zio dot succeed Okay, so now this is going to be not an app, this is going to be a UIO because it doesn't require anything and it's never going to fail with anything. Let's go do the same thing to the console over here, console F2, console old. There we go. Wait a couple of seconds until all the tests pass. Save all. There we go. Uh, copy paste, F2, console, close all the others. Uh, over here we have old we're gonna do this and this and delete them and like this and it should be already enough all right so same as always it's actually kind of boring isn't it right so we're gonna do this and we're gonna change this to negative r negative r minus r I'm not actually sure how to do this okay so we're gonna go like this and you know, we're gonna mark these guys we're gonna change them to zero r e unit like this and same as before it's actually probably uh, much easier to just rewrite the entire line okay so it's going to be yo yo of console of any and nothing like this and an equal sign over here this s delay is going to be well actually all of them are simply going to be zero whoops whoops come on uh all of them are going to be zero dot succeed by the way i probably should have um explained this portion uh this part a little bit better hold on let me let me finish this real quick so let me just change all of them to uio Okay, so when we were doing uh, the whole thing was it was tagless final and everything that was using sync, which basically meant, you know, do any uncontrollable side effect you want. Uh, we were wrapping even the creation of the mutable state into a delay, right? So over here, we're not creating uh, just a console. We're creating a console wrapped into something which is succeed. Remember succeed has a name parameter, right? So it's it's delayed automatically, okay? So this is something that, uh, you know, the D layers would sort of like take, you know, do it for you, right? So this is gonna be just like a layer with a trait, but behind the scenes, we already know that behind the layer is just a regular Z, so yeah. All right, next step in line is fancy console. Fancy console uses the console. This is the one that just adds uh, colors, right? So we're gonna go over here, fancy console, old. There we go. Wait a couple of seconds until SBT catches up, save all. Again, wait a couple of seconds, and there we go. Copy paste, F2, remove this part, close all the others, and go over here and mark this portion. Fancy console, fancy console, yeah, 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 probably all of them, yeah. Remove them like this. It just said, if I save the file now, it's not gonna compile because I already changed the console part. So let me actually go back and change it like this, because like this is this is how I always do my rewrites. Like first I just make, you know, make it compile, and then I do like, you know, the, the next step. All right, let's go to the top, find the C, 
change this to Z. Let's go over here, find the F, change the whole thing to R and E, right? So uh, find this F, mark this, uh, go like this, change to Z O R E unit like this. Over here, we're gonna find this guy, remove the entire parameter, find the O, delete over here. Uh, this is going to be the console that is not going to require anything and it and it's not going to fail so it's going to be like this okay so it's going to be fancy console uh pretty much was the same thing right so it's going to be any nothing therefore all of these guys are going to be marked uh like this change to uio like this and yeah i believe this is already it yeah nice nice and easy but now we have uh pretty much fixed all of the dependencies for our controller so now we can go and try to fix the controller and this is the one that metals is going to ruin for me i'm sure so i'm going to press shift enter because we have this controller like all over the place so i need to be very very careful all right so this is the delivery that yeah this is fine controller suite this is fine the dependency graph yeah so see we we're not touching http for us no no we're not touching skunk uh no this one actually we do touch right so this is the main that just yeah this is fine uh this one is also fine okay so only only like the http 4 s part we should leave alone okay shift enter all right it looks like everything is green yep save all and let's go over here wait a couple of seconds yeah and there we go copy paste remove the old all right Okay, so this is exactly what I meant was a console before, right? So if I just remove this and I just remove uh, this, right? It should compile because we're still using like the old versions, right? This is what I meant like was the first step and then, then the second step. Now the controller is like the biggest file, right? So it's like 233 lines, but it actually hides behind one simple trait, which has just the, you know, just the basically just a run okay i call it program but it's you know it's basically just run all right so uh over here we're using cats and cats data actually for cats data we only use non-empty non-empty vector like this is uh this is something that should have been like in the very very initial commit i tried to do like as clean as possible like all of these refactorings but like it's you know there were, there were so many things that i changed like it you know happens all right so over here we're going to use uh zero and therefore we're going to move this line down like this because it's alphabetically sorted and so on uh all right so find the f over here we're going to change this thing to negative r plus e all right so this is going to be a zero of r e unit get down over here find the f delete the t find this and this is going to be the r again this is just so that uh when we're integrating with the zero environment so that we can inject this r uh, like nothing over here touches this r the same as like in the boundary right the controller doesn't touch it the boundary doesn't touch it they, they just need to be able to be passed through uh for the case where at the very end we're going to use the uh postgres uh skunk and this one is going to uh need some time classes and we only have the instances for the zero environment this is the only the reason why why I need it all right so let's mark all of this old stuff mark all of them and just delete it okay so over here we don't need the F we need to go over here and this is going to be R and the boundary is hard-coded to fail with a throwable okay the fancy console however on the other hand it just is going to have any and nothing like this okay same thing over here any and nothing this is by the way the first time that we're not just passing the R through to all of our dependencies right we could do it over here right so that so that all of them have the access to R but if we do it like this the some type signatures are going to be much simpler and so we're going to go with this solution instead you know if you want to play around with this uh you know uh grab this thing once once it's finished and introduce like instead of any put an r over here right and, and then fix the couple of errors and you're going to see exactly what i meant it's it's not such a big deal it's, it's just unnecessary all right let's have a look over here so we're using the parse we're still going to need the parse we're not going to need the monad error though so no so we can remove this okay so find the app switch it to r and nothing okay so the controller is going to uh catch all for everything that the boundary is going to throw Okay, this, this point is very, very important. All right, so remember how in all the previous ones, we pretty much marked this part and then we simply replaced it with something. For example, if we would never fail, we would replace it with UIO. If we would fail with a throwable, we would do a task, right? In this particular case, we cannot actually do this because like in most cases, we're going to use a URIO. This is the one that is gonna be able to fail with throwable. But because of these two guys, in uh, several places, we're actually gonna use UIO because they're not gonna fail. So I need to be very, very selective with uh, how we're gonna we're gonna change it okay so this one is going to be urio okay so this is the one that does not require anything but it might fail with a throwable uh, i'm sorry i said it on this is the one that actually requires something and it uh it uh, it doesn't fail right so we actually need to specify what it requires right so this is going to be the the r 
Okay, so usually uh, U are the type aliases that, that never fail, okay? And the ones that, that have an R, they say, okay, we actually need an R. All right, let's see, let's scroll down. Uh, so, okay, so this is the F over here, right? So as you can see, so it uses the random, so it's it's gonna need the UIO, okay? Like this, right? So it doesn't need any dependencies. Uh, same thing over here, UIO. Uh, same thing over here, right? So basically, uh, all the things that don't touch the boundary, they will just be UIO. As soon as we touch the boundary, we need to do we need to do URIO so that we can pass the R through to the boundary. Okay, so let's see. Like this is fine. Uh, same thing over here. Um, that's fine. And that's fine. Okay, so over here we have like true pure F. Instead, we need to just succeed with a true. Succeed with a true like this all right now these parts are actually funny right so the handle arrow with in cats is i'm sorry in zeal is called catch all then iterate while in ca in, in zeal is called the repeat while right and void is called a unit right so this is sort of like the first time we actually have to like change the implementation a little bit but it's just because zeal uses different names you know like samuel's you know for traverse it uses for each and you know a couple of things uh change over here right but like like most most semantics are uh, are actually kept exactly the same. All right, so let's go over here. So this one it just uses a console, so it's going to be simply UIO. Uh, this one uh, over here, so this one touches the boundary over here, right? And therefore it needs to be URIO. Let's actually try to find the aliases like this. So UIO and no, I actually wanted I don't want the object. I want the type. Can we just go to the type? There we go. Okay, so these are all the aliases, right? This is the URIO. This is the one that wants the R, uh, uh, and it never fails. And um, and this is the one that. So we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use like these three in the controller. Okay, so RIO is going to be the one that is going to fail. Like, so every time we touch the boundary, I believe I said it wrong before. So when we touch the boundary, we need to pass in the R, and the boundary fails with the throwable. So we're going to need to use the Rio. Okay, as soon as we just go like go to the console or go to the random generator, we're going to be fine with with UIO. Okay, and sometimes we're going to know that we're not going to fail, which is pretty much just the only case at the top of the controller at the run because we have the catch all, right? Because we have the catch all, this is pretty much the only place uh, where we have the URIO. Oh, oh, whoa, uh, over here, URIO, right? So this is the only one that is not going to fail. So at the rest of the file, we're going to use the UIO and the real all the time, okay? So I just I just remembered this because I saw create and I was like, yeah, we actually use real and then, uh, you know, instead of the URIO, okay? This is going to be a real, we need to pass in the R, uh, not like this over here the R and it's going to produce a unit. All right, so we have like a bunch of these uh, helper methods. So this one is going to pass in the function on success and this function is going to call uh, call the boundary, right? With the local date time, it's going to call something like, you know, with deadline prompt, right? So it's going to uh, ask it for stuff. So uh, this is going to be the one with a real and therefore um, this one over here is going to be with a real and therefore we're going to have an R over here and we're going to have an R over here like this. All right, let's have a look at this one. So it's just a con so therefore we're gonna be fine with UIO. So let's look at this one to local date time. It actually doesn't require anything, right? It's gonna be fine. By the way, we're still using cats, right? So we're still using, we're doing things like, things like either catch down fatal and stuff, right? So there's nothing wrong with mixing zeal and cats. You probably don't need cats effect and we're gonna throw it out at the end of the series, but you still can use cats. Cats is not just a functional programming library. It's also just a utility library. It's gonna, actually there, there will be one, one spot at the end where, where we're gonna, you know, where the code with cats is gonna look, uh, much better, even though Zio actually also has an implementation for it. This is going to be the spot was the parallel error handling. Right, so let's go down. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, so this is just a console. So we're going to do UIO uh, over here. So we're touching the boundary. Therefore, it's going to be real with an R over here. Let's keep looking. Okay, so this thing over here, it's going to be a real with R like this. Let's see if I can press the dot. No, I can't. So I can do this and I can do this and I can do that like this by the way like these ones they're sort of like um it's not super uh clear uh why it actually produces the real right because it just as the you know the id prompt and stuff uh the problem is that like these functions you know, like these functions they will call the boundary like so whatever is passed in over here it's going to be able to it's, it's going to call the boundary and therefore it's going to produce the real and therefore the entire thing is going to produce the real all right so was read one the same thing so this is going to be this going to be a real with r unit and same thing over here real real r unit like this let's keep looking all right so console over here so this is going to be uio 
UIL like this. Delete all touches the boundaries. So it's going to be over here. It's going to be a real R unit and show all is going to be also like this, right? So it's going to be a real R unit like this. Let's keep looking. Uh, this one. All right. So we're going to find the F and it's going to be UIO because it doesn't touch the boundary. However, it's actually going to uh, have a couple more uh, changes. Oh, by the way, I totally forgot like this thing. It exists in, in cats and it's a it's a flat map where uh, you don't do anything with the parameter of the function this, that, that you're passing in. Uh, cats also has the so-called shard operator, which is uh, this one. Right. And Z has only this one. Right. The difference between them is that, you know, the the one that we had before, it always calls the flat map. So it always goes through monad. So you have the guarantee of the sequential operation. Uh, this one technically goes through product, which might run in parallel. And Zio defines only one of them. In fact, even in the, the Tegla Spinal series, I should have used uh, this operator. OK, so I just replaced them all in, in the entire file. I, I, I kind of skipped them all, uh, you know, before. Uh, okay, not not in the entire file. I thought I thought I kind of did. Okay, Alt F three change to this. Okay, uh, let me let me actually see real quick. Yeah, so for example, over here, right? So they were they were all over the place, right? So this is basically like a sort of like a flat map where we we don't use the uh, we don't use the parameter. All right, where were we? We were over here. All right, so to do's is a not empty vector, and we're using the sort by function, which is not on the Scala Collections library. It's in, in, in it's in cats, right? It's for the non empty vector. So uh, we, we could still kind of keep using it, but I kind of want to throw it out, like sort of like the, the whole point of this uh, of this uh, rewrite is to get rid of you know of stuff from cats. So uh, we're simply going to convert it to a regular vector, and then we're going to use the regular sort by you know, the regular sort by uh, deadline, okay? And therefore, we don't need this this thing. So we're still going to map to this. And we're using a traverse, a, an interesting implementation of the traverse. It's the traverse with an underscore that basically does traverse and then void to convert the return type to a unit. Uh, Zio doesn't, has, doesn't have that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do pipe. We're going to do Zio dot for each, right? We're going to pass in that, that thing. Okay, and over here, we're going to do console dot put string string line okay so this line is basically going to do exactly the same thing as this one but we also need to do like this dot void thing and this dot void thing in zero is actually called a uh, unit right so we need to do we need to do this okay i'm still not saving the file because i don't want i don't want to have a bunch of red lines and by the way for the pipe we're using scala util chaining and i actually kind of forgot to show you this in the previous video um uh right before the zero series started i uh, created a video about the exports feature in scala about specifically about the top level uh exports and so inside of core there is a file called uh, core exports and I'm using I'm using these guys and therefore in, in, in inside of the entire project I never have to do something like this right so this is already exported and therefore uh, I have access to to this pipe okay let's continue all right rendered with pattern um, doesn't even have any effects so we're not gonna uh, need to change anything over there uh, search by description uh, calls the boundary over here and therefore it needs to be a uh, real and over here we're gonna need the R then we're gonna have uh, search by D so we're gonna have over here we're gonna replace it with real R comma um, da, 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 da. same thing over here um, same thing over here and uh oh oh man like this sometimes happens when i do like you know global like uh, replaces and stuff so we probably introduced like a couple of these guys uh no like this okay so this one is going to be the uio okay in fact we might actually be done let's see if i made any mistakes i probably have like it's this is such a large file uh over there okay what do we have no no this needs to be a real and uh okay so now this one yeah like i have no idea how like these like two vector thingies got injected in there like i pressed something weird and uh yeah by the way if you're in if you're in vs code and you don't have like gazillions of warnings and blah blah, blah like for example over here i have only one error if i press a fade it's just gonna go go there there we go uh again like this two vector got introduced somehow and yeah there we go this was the the entire rewrite of this thing I know it's a little too fast, but you have the diffs, right? This is exactly why I'm why I'm committing all of this stuff. And I would commit now, but we actually still have the um, the controller suite. Okay, so uh, let's go over here. Um, where's it? Test uh, controller suite. There we go. All right, F two controller suite old. There we go. 
and save all the files and go over here copy paste f2 just control suite like this close all the others and go over here and find oh mark it like this and okay so i want to delete just this one and this one okay and at the bottom of the file we have maybe i can collapse it yeah i can there we go so i need to do this okay so this should already compile yeah it does great like this all right so we're using cats we're using raf we're using the global stuff so change this to zero delete this delete this all right so uh we're gonna go uh, probably to the bottom of the file, the same as we did was like boundary and entity gateway. We're gonna we're gonna fix uh, we're gonna fix our fakes. All right, so let's find the F. Not this one, this one, this one, and let's find the old. By the way, we should we should change old and the entire file. Just like just remove it. Okay, so we don't need this guy. Go over there, and we're gonna have the any over here, and we're gonna have throwable because our boundaries are hard coded to be throwable. And over here, we're gonna mark this one and go. Over here like all of these ones um yeah like these ones so these are going to be tasks right task like this all right the next one is going to be the fake fancy console uh so we're simply going to remove this whole thing uh this whole thing and we're going to find the f not this one and we're going to change this to any and nothing which is why uh, these guys are going to be uios right like this okay right so now let's go fake random like this remove this let's go here let's go let's have any and nothing and therefore this guy is going to be a uio as well all right so we have uh, parsing of a string to a unit hilarious now we have um you remember how i told you that i always have the fakes and inside of every test i on, i override only the things that i need these guys are the same is the same pattern but they they are reusable right so i'm using like this useful random i'm using it a bunch of times i'm using like this useful console a bunch of times and so on okay great so we're gonna go over here we don't need this entire uh tagless final kind of thing uh we're gonna find the f not this one we're gonna remove this one so this f is going to be simply uio and this entire thing is simply going to be zero succeed with fake and like this all right remove this entire line all right so we're gonna find the f like this delete this whole thing this is gonna be a raft where the back type is hard coded to zero therefore we don't need this thing so it's going to be a fake console of like this right fake fancy console this is the one that already has like all of the types uh hard coded and so all of these guys are going to be uh let's see let's see let's see whoa that was too much all right so uh all of these guys one two three four these ones are going to be uio of unit there we go now we're dealing with refs again and if you remember from the previous video they're actually swapped right so we need to do this and that's actually all we need for the fakes right so we have like a useful console that we can use and uh, all these tasks they're actually calling a private def um this one in fact like this is the one that i want to show you completely okay so this is probably like um the most interesting function in in all of the tasks that we have like this is the one that like fakes a console in a in a non silly way Right, so this is actually a very, very useful way to uh, test your applications uh, in such a way that you know you, you're pretending that that people are actually typing something into the console. All right, so obviously we need to fix it a little bit. So over here we're going to have just the to do ID and any and throwable over here. Right, these ones are going to stay the same, the same, the same, the same. Okay, so this is not going to be F. This is going to be. In fact, we're just constructing the program and then we are running it once. Uh, maybe in this case, we would actually do uh, just a runtime dot default dot unsafe, hold on, default unsafe run like this. Okay, and therefore we can uh, simply do this and remove that. All right, so over here we have the raf off. So we're gonna change it to make. We actually don't need this entire uh, help from the, uh, you know, for the compiler and uh, yeah. This is, this is actually it. This is the whole private def, right? So essentially you uh, give it some input, you tell it what, what output to expect or, or error, what, which errors to expect, and then it constructs a console, right? A fake console. It uh, uh, uses the controller, right? So it, 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 it puts this, uh, it injects this console into the controller, then it runs the program and it retrieves the data from the, uh, from the ref and it runs the checks like this, okay? So now we actually need to go and fix the actual tests, okay? So over here, we're gonna, we're not, 
not gonna need the types because we're hard coding everything to zero. By the way, guys, check check this line, right? So I started working on this series three months ago. It took me three months to produce this entire series. Don't ask me where I get this motivation from. I have no idea. All right, so we're gonna go and find the F and we're gonna delete everything to unit. And by the way, this is the spot where we use, where we we totally, uh, totally use uh, parametric polymorphism and we don't care about the IDs. And so we inject a unit for our IDs, okay? Uh, our boundary does not need anything and it fails with a throwable like this. And over here, uh, just delete to unit. And um, by the way, we actually don't need, we actually don't need this new. Like this right we're in scala 3 it's gonna be fine maybe in this case we should leave it i'm not sure because here's the thing like in this particular task i don't need to override anything but over here i do and over here i'm going to require the new keyword so i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna leave it like this it's actually a, a fun part if you leave out the new then you have to specify the type parameter if you have the new then you don't need to specify the type parameter but i kind of prefer to keep things consistent right so over here as soon as i require the new uh and you know i have like this colon over here uh, I will probably need these. No, maybe not. Oh yeah, I will. Like this is a spot where where you always require to specify the parameters, right? If you're creating anonymous classes like this. In any case, so I can just grab these guys and I can inject them over here. And in this case, I need to not forget to inject the column over here. Find the app, replace it with a task like this. And over here, instead of app pure, I'm going to change to paren with zero dot succeed like this let's keep looking okay so we're constructing the boundary again so i think it's gonna be faster if i just grab these guys go over there and grab these guys paste go over here add the column find the f replace it with a task okay and over here find the f and change this to zero dot fail right so over there we had to succeed over here we're testing the the fail portion everybody's happy and let's see um should yield an error uh so let's grab this guy go down over there uh this is the boundary and we're gonna do paste and we don't need the colon over here and uh oh that's it i accidentally saved the file and it actually compiles okay so we can actually see the console right so we should have um yeah so we have the old suite and we have the new suite and that's actually it for the delivery portion of the series so uh, let me actually go and do gcam delivery and by the way guys don't forget to hit the like button it's going to allow me to find more awesome people like you so let's finally progress to the dependency injection portion and we're going to finally see our uh, our application actually run so we have the main over here source crud okay so we're going to start with a dependency graph same as always dependency graph old shift enter yeah this is exactly what i predicted so http no uh http no uh skunk no just this one and this one yes all right there we go and save all like this and copy paste and dependency graph like this and let's just remove the old like this and close the others and uh, there we go let me create more space so that we we can kind of see the whole thing, right? This is already the whole thing. All right, so let's find the C, replace it with zero, remove this guy. We don't need anything over here. Uh, everywhere we say old, we can pretty much just remove this, okay? So this is gonna be a console with any and nothing. And the same thing for this render and the same thing for this controller, okay? Remember, a controller handles all of the errors because of this catch-all in there. And let's also find this F and this is going to be a UIO like this okay this raft is going to be make and we're starting with an empty vector so we actually need to help out uh with the types a little bit so i'm going to go and i'm going to delete around these guys find the y and i'm going to paste over there and i'm going to go back to the f and i'm going to delete all of these guys and actually this should already be it right just changing a couple of types moving a couple of things around there we go so now we need to go to the program which is over here do program old shift enter as I predicted, way too many. HTTP, no. HTTP, no. Postgres, no. Regular one, yes. This one, yes. Shift enter. There we go. All right. And save all like this. So let's go over here. Copy paste. F2 program like this. And just close all the others and change the 
O like this so that the tests at the bottom pass and everything compiles. All right, so we're going to use uh, Zio over here and this line is going to be much easier to simply rewrite. It's going to be yo-yo of unit with an equal sign over here. Remove this entire line everywhere where it says all. We're going to mark and just delete like this and this actually might be it. Great, we're almost there. So we're going to go to main. Uh, right, this is the one that throws the it throws the random number and it chooses the effect type. So we're gonna have the new one over here. Close all the others. Cancel. Save all. Close all the others. And we're gonna remove this like this. All right, cool. So everything compiles. Now this entire main we can pretty much uh, throw out, right? So all we need to do is we need to import uh, Zio star, right? And just throw everything out over here. Uh, I pressed the wrong button. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be our Zio app and all we're gonna have in there is gonna be override def run, which is gonna get the args with a list of strings and it's gonna produce the URIO with Zio environment and the exit code. Okay, what is it gonna do? Well, it's simply gonna do program.make dot exit exit code. There we go. This is it. This is the uh, the end of the rewrite. Let me actually not forget to commit it, gcam main. All right, so let's actually see it in action. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here. We're simply gonna go into main, well, simply main, right, this one. Okay, so we're gonna do run or simply R and it's gonna say, hey, which one do you wanna run? Well, we wanna run the new one. Okay, so a new one, we're gonna do uh, show all, there's nothing in there, create, uh, buy milk. Uh, what are we gonna do, 2021, 6, uh, 27, uh, 18, 29, there we go, show all, there we go, works like a charm. Uh, search by ID, it handles the arrows exactly the same way, search by ID 5, search by ID uh, 0, right, and Q for quit, and it's all good. Let's not forget to push it real quick, GP, GH repo view in the web, browser, there we go, go to commits, and there we go. So in the previous video we did core and persistence and today we did delivery and the main. So you can click on, on, on all of them and compare them. Uh, by the way, probably at the end of the series you should probably compare like straight from here uh, to the final one, right? Because uh, in, the, in the last video we're going to remove all of the ones that are, you know, all of the files that end was old and this diff is going to be more uh, fruitful, I guess. All right, that's all I have for you today. I know it was a little bit fast, but it was very, very mechanical. If it was too fast, just look at the commits, uh, you know, compare the diffs. And for the future videos or, you know, in the future, like in general, whenever I'm going to do the rewrites, you know, you have to understand that the stuff is already committed and pushed, right? So look in the description of the video, you know, open the diff next, you know, next to when I'm explaining this and uh, it's going to help you uh, to follow along. In any case, I'm blabbering at this point. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm going to see you in the next one for now. As always, it's been Vlad from devinsideyou.com. Don't forget to like this video. If you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you learned something today, consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, whatever you prefer. And let's watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.